We have witnessed repeated violent confrontations between Turkish and Syrian government forces. For its part, the Russian Federation is actively engaged in support of the Syrian government's military operations. UN Special Envoy offers a bleak view of the political crisis in Syria, which in turn has resulted in a devastating humanitarian situation that continues to deteriorate on a daily basis, close to a million displaced people being squeezed into an ever-decreasing space by advancing front lines on all sides. I am getting daily reports of babies and other young children dying in the cold. Imagine the grief of a parent who escaped a war zone with their child, only to watch that child freeze to death. Many members contend the crisis is a direct consequence of Russian support. It can only end with a plea to our Russian um, colleague to stop the support of Syria. If you tell the Syrians that there is no longer military support to the Syrian regime, they will have to stop the onslaught on their own population. To my German colleague, we will not stop supporting the legitimate government of Syria, which is conducting a legitimate fight against international terrorists. How can you justify carrying out such indiscriminate and inhumane attacks? What are you doing to uphold international humanitarian law? What are you doing to protect the people who are fleeing? Where do you expect those people to flee to? And another question posed by the U.S. ambassador. The question I asked before the council today, then, what will tomorrow's headline be? And what are we going to do about it? The answer today, as it has been on so many occasions in the Security Council before, nothing. The Security Council has been deeply divided since the very beginning of the Syrian conflict. Russia has wielded its veto on 14 occasions, preventing any form of united Security Council action. In the face of what is becoming the greatest humanitarian crisis of the 21st century, the international community appears unable to act political interests continuing to take priority over the suffering of millions of civilians. Mike Hanna, Al Jazeera, United Nations.